Okay, guys, uh, great to see you. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here to have a uh, lovely conversation about Star Wars and everything that uh, Hasbro is working on for Star Wars. Uh, we're here as part of the uh, Star Action Figures SAF 1 Collectors event, uh, which we're really, really excited about. Um, and it's, we really appreciate the fact that you've all made the time to, to have this conversation today. Uh, I'm Brandon, Associate Brand Manager for uh, Marvel and Star Wars here in uh, the UK for, for Hasbro. Uh, joining me is Steve Evans. Uh, our um, uh, product designer for both Marvel and Star Wars fan product uh, over at uh, Hasbro HQ. Uh, and we are not alone. We are joined by uh, our fantastic team of uh, UK influencers. Here. We have Stephen, aka Sith Lord 229, uh, avid Black Series collector, uh, vintage collection uh, collector, and, uh, and, and Star Wars YouTuber, as well as Tim, uh, our very own Bosk's Bounty, uh, the, uh, the man himself, the, the king of TVC, as some might say. Um, <laughs> uh, I know that, yeah, big Tim, there he is. Um, but uh, as I say, great to have you all here. Uh, great to, to uh, sit back and listen to you guys have a great conversation about Star Wars. Um, so I will, I will leave you to it. Thanks, great. Brandon. Thanks for having us, Brandon. Uh, shall I go first? Yes, yeah, by Someone. all means, Tim. I've got to let the king go first, surely, after that introduction. <laughs> Break the ice, Yeah, cheers for that, Brandon. Please please don't take anything Brandon just said uh, in in any seriousness, of what, seriousness whatsoever. Um, but, yeah, no, appreciate it, Steve, for you, uh, you know, coming along to this. Um, I met you in person at um, Celebration, which is great to have a conversation with you there. Um, so, yeah, it's always good to have this sort of opportunity and that sort of engagement with the community. So thank you so much. Hey, no worries. It's nice to see you again. I've met you. I don't think I've met you, Stephen, but it's nice to nice to chat to you both. I'm yeah. very aware of both of you and follow you follow along with you. So uh, thanks for everything you do in the community and dedicate your time and effort and money. Although Stephen's not dedicating his money on his webcam, but there we go. It's all right. We can still hear him. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear his northern northern tones. Nice to meet you both. Should have just got a cardboard cutout, shouldn't I? <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so but basically my first question for you, Steve, is um, around the fact that you are now back on Star Wars. I am, um, yes. Many people will know that you used to work on Star Wars and then you moved over to Marvel for a little while. And the news that you were coming back was met with um, great fanfare in, in the TVC oh, community, fair. especially, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people are happy that you are that you are back. Um much of that is because obviously you are a presence online on Instagram and you do engage with the fans and, and things like that. So for me personally, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you're, you're, you're back on, uh, back on working on the line on TVC. Um, so my first question is, um, if you can, is there anything that, um, that you've implemented or changed since you've been, uh, back in the role of, uh, on Star Wars, uh, regarding tvc and the line in general yeah um obviously we know things are you know done way in the future if you like or past if, uh but in terms of just like in general around the line is there anything that you've changed or implemented for the good <laughs> uh, <laughs> for the good uh, that's the important caveat there for, for the better uh well you know i haven't been doing it that long I haven't been I haven't come back to him for that that long but i appreciate the uh the, the positive reception that you and, and others have given me but also i also appreciate the uh the feedback and the guidelines and the sort of warnings where you better do this not do this i like it all i like i, I work on the premise of i like pats on the back it's very nice but put them aside quickly i like the i like the the harder the feedback more because then I can do something about it. So a lot of the stuff that I've been working on with the team, you know, as Chris and Emily, as Eric, uh, is continuing what we're doing, but also looking at how we tell stories better. You know, I think Returns Tatooine is a first example. That's probably the first thing that I've kind of personally touched uh, with, with the line. You know, we're working on 26 now and I'm kind of thinking 26 and 27 onwards. So a lot of the stuff that will be implemented as you say won't be for another you know year or two but i think return to tatooine is the first thing that you can i kind of got my little signature on along with you know with chris and the marketing team um which is about you know telling stories telling concise stories every year you know we we have a certain amount of items and product that we can make 
the the fan base for TBC is a certain size, you know, highly passionate. You know, you guys spend a lot of money and a lot of effort on it. And I wanted to kind of try and organize the line a little bit more so it's not so scattershot so that we can tell distinct themes and stories and change those annually. You know, we've got some we've got some great stories coming up. You know, 27 is going to be a very interesting year. It's a certain someone's birthday. Uh, oh, lovely. So, yeah, so that I think that's my my always long winded answer is that, yeah, it's. The returns tattooing is probably the first thing I've implemented and there's some other stuff that's coming along. But uh it's it's great to be able to spend time on fan. So like I'm looking after Marvel and Star Wars now, and that's just on a fan slice. So it's we're yeah. organizing by consumer. So whereas on Marvel I was, you know, fan kid and preschool for a while. It you know, I found when I came back on Star Wars and Marvel, I was like, do all my fan stuff, and then I was going, oh, I must switch to kid now. I've got to think about kid. And I was like, oh no, I don't have to. Which that that almost luxury of having time to think just about fan and just about the community is is paid dividends and that allows me to plan or allows everyone to plan and put more effort and thought into it. So that was a really good coming back to that was really great. I think that's probably one of the main reasons I did. You know, it was like, okay, I'm just on fan collectors. That's interesting because before we move on, Steve, if he doesn't mind, and I hope you don't mind either, Steve, but is there is do you think like the whole fan thing has changed over the last few years um, when you say like, a the fan <clears throat> line? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, social media is obviously played, you know, you guys are on YouTube and, and do all this stuff there and I'm on it as well. And so I think social media has had a massive impact, especially through, you know, since COVID where people haven't been going out and they've been going to social media even more. So this idea of thoughts and groups of people um, creating uh creating kind of almost little tribes and little kind of um, um, events themselves. Like when we launched the barge, you know, we had the whole barge, you know, fan collector movement behind it. And so I think people can rally around in social media a lot more, a lot more easily. So it's, it's become a great insightful tool for us, you know, a great, a fantastic insights tool. You know, I can ask certain questions on my, on a, on social media and kind of start getting ideas of what, what the, the community's, thinking and, and feeling so that's well, changed a lot they'll certainly yeah. let you know <laughs> <laughs> they do they do and I, like i always want to know you know i never i never shy away from that so that's been a big one all right cool appreciate it thanks yeah, no worries. Well, come on then steve we, uh, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah as long as you can hear me that's fine you don't need to see again yeah that's fine. um so it's interesting that we talked that we talked about community and that sort of aspect of the 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 job as it were steve so what one of the questions i wanted to put to you is what is it about that wider collecting community that is so important to you like in terms of what you take away from it um not just from a, a fan perspective but with regards to your role at hasbro as well yeah no it's 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 absolutely vital i mean gone are the days where we just kind of sit on our sit by ourselves and just decide what we want to make or, or decide, you know, what license or exactly what the license saw wants. We can now fold into that what fan sentiment and collector sentiment is for something. You know, there are certain things we've got to support things. It's it's, a, it's our role, but like we can have a better debate and a better discussion about what stories to tell and what figures and characters to explore next and know what's missing, what is missing and wanted, and what is missing that maybe isn't wanted, and kind of just get a better planning. Um, cadence gone because like I can just literally jump on this and get a sense of what what the collector community wants so that's incredibly helpful it's huge it's just it's 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 paramount I don't think it if I'm honest I don't think it could exist I don't think this sort of idea of like just having like a fan focused team could exist without the ability to check in easily and quickly with collectors and I know it's not like mm. It, sometimes it can be a little personalized you know uh, if, if someone's if a single person's got a loud voice i'm going to see more of it but um i'm old mm. enough and i've been around enough to kind of temper that and i always go and check somewhere else and just see what the sentiment is on different platforms and things and you can kind of build up a picture yeah. so I, I literally i don't think we could do it without you i know it sounds terribly passe and a little bit kind of blowing smoke but like, <laughs> like I, I am focused on fans so if i can't listen or hear or yeah. interact with fans I'm not going to do my job that well. It's, it's just kind of common sense. Yeah. So it's huge. I mean, you, sp you speak about going online and being able to access 
for, for lack of a better term, people's opinions a lot easier. Do you find that that aspect of things helps sort of the, like the market research side of your job in terms of gauging fan response? And yeah, you said yeah. that you don't take on board, obviously, individual um, wants and voices and what have you. But in, with regards to that, like how how important and how, how sort of loud do people have to shout to... <laughs> if, that, if, that, if that makes any sense no and listen it's the insight is different from research let's put that let's put that there straight away you know so having conversations is not scientific research and it's not there you, know, you can't kind of submit it to submit it as, as as research but it helps it's a guide you know it's like um going bowling and you've got those little those little inflatable things down the side it just kind of helps you get to hit the pins at the end so it is really useful but you're right i there are there are lots of people that shout loudly and I kind of I hear that but then you have to you have to then go and kind of sanity check yourself you have to think okay well that's being said over there is it being said anywhere else oh yes yes no no and you try and kind of sieve through the 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 noise a little bit because that is that's is the flip side of it social media is very can be very noisy but um <laughs> that's why it's not always social media social media is going to San Diego it's doing things like this and and, and yeah, we're all fans ourselves. So we all kind of are in the community and we have our little, we have a little sort of casual network at work as well, where we just kind of grab a coffee and talk about what we're seeing and hearing. So it gets through, it does get through. Cool. Yeah, so I was literally just about to shout really, really loudly, <laughs> Hoth Stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, in one of those trailers so you know about him already um so my sure. questions now are going to be um more about the most recent reveals just to get a bit more insight um i know other fan channels love doing the q and a's uh, with the hasbro team after like big events and stuff because it does enable us to sort of get a few other bits and pieces clarified about releases and stuff like that yeah. um so my first question is about cob vanth and yeah. the the card back so yes. it was announced that we're no longer getting the um, deluxe boxes and deluxe style figures are going to be on. Yeah. There you I've go. Yeah. Got, a whole, got a whole load of stuff laying here, which I might be able to pull. But yeah, go on, carry on. Um, they're going to be back on card backs. So yes. first of all, that, that card back is a larger card back. Is it going to yes. be the size, I, I'm not sure if you'll know this, of the... Um, mando with the spiders or is it going yeah. to be in between the two is it going to be that size uh it's not going to be two what is he vc 211 i want to say 211 i used to live at 211 willett street and i think that one is 211 so that's that if i remember is is nine by eight the, the mando one the standard ones are six by nine as, as always are yeah. so the deluxe one i think the cob one is a, is a seven by nine so it's not quite as wide as that because when i you know i we we had a look at it and got this what's this this is that's that's six okay so that's a six by nine right when we had it in yeah the box. but i can arrange those figures any way i want i can just put them in and you know i love cards as much as everyone else so when we said hey we don't we can go back to plastic i was like well let's do where we got deluxe stuff that are bigger or more stuff that doesn't fit on a six by nine and when i say six by nine when i say doesn't fit on a six by nine what i mean by that is I got to make sure it hasn't been revealed. Make sure it's been revealed. Yes, it's this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is very important, right? This is really important, this bit here. Like, if you go wider than that, this starts to get a bit thin. But the the Mando one, when I saw it, I was like, I think it's too square. It's almost, it's, it doesn't look like a card back proportion. So I said, do we need yeah. to go that far? What is the maximum we can come across with the blister that will hold all the figures that we know we want to do? Because I don't want to have to keep, I don't want each one would be different. That's the other thing. So I said, find the lowest common denominator. What is the size of blister we need? What is the width of card that we need to allow us to do this on a card in memorial forevermore? And it came up with that seven by seven by nine. We looked at six by nine, but it was just get it, this, in my opinion, this was just getting a little bit too thin and a bit skinny. And it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. And I know a lot of people are like, it's got to be six by yeah. nine. What are you doing? But, um, it's one of those. You've got to trust that, me on this one. Some of the stuff it doesn't work all the time. It really doesn't. Yeah. Knowing the characters we've got to do. Yeah, because I remember when the um, the larger car back for the Mando came out. I mean, I myself didn't hear too many complaints about it, but I remember Patrick mentioning 
you know the feedback wasn't great on it or whatever and I, I guess people you know have star cases and acrylic cases and yeah. we're gonna have to find one that kind of fits this <laughs> new one that's 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 you the are. only issue I, but... I guess the promise at the moment is it'll be nine it'll be seven by nine we shouldn't we shouldn't have to change it because it's, yeah. it it plans enough that we can put who we need to and still allow that important character bit where the six by nine I, I felt wouldn't always do that yeah because it has been done before with the sith trooper isn't it with all those yes one seven two a is it i think it's i might be getting that wrong might be one seven five it's around it's definitely an a a number yeah you you have put you have put them in like that in like that before but you just felt this you know there's just maybe too many accessories to to do knowing who we knowing and knowing who we're doing down the line there's a there's a hint uh it was like uh, no so we, what i didn't want to do is keep going boop, 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 different yeah. sizes so it's a choice some people will agree some people won't but there's a reason at least that's okay that's cool that. no thanks uh, i appreciate the uh, no transparency on it anyway but everyone likes the cards right over the boxes i would i would oh, 100 percent suggest yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool definitely i'll take that as a win <laughs> <laughs> Second week and get him, Steve. Eh? <laughs> um, so Tim, obviously being the the three and three quarter inch man among us, um, I'm I'm starting to find myself diving into the realm of black series that little bit more day by day. Um, and so my next question for you, Steve, is obviously black series is quite a big sort of passion of yours as well, uh, given your involvement with it over the years. Yep. Um, but that also applies to retro collection as well. So with regards to three and three quarter inch black series, but focusing on those two lines specifically, just because of, like I said, your involvement on them over the years, what have been some of your favorite releases from those two lines? And what about those releases make them your favorite? Is it character selection? Is uh, it the amount for, of- For black series and retro. You... For yeah, black series and retro. Just one for me. God, yeah. blimey. Uh, <laughs> well, I should always, listen, when we brought photo reel to black series that was a big thing we had it with ray and rex the two r's i remember that that was i remember that fondly i think it was that whole that whole time of my first star wars tour of duty that was a very special time but like to be able to bring that and get really realistic looking faces finally because like you know we'd done some with we'd done some previously and it's like but like having photo reel those two in particular are probably my fa two favorite yeah. figures just because of they came out together, you know, Rex in particular was one that was really wanted and to be able to do it with the, uh, the Morrison kind of face um, technology, that was really cool. So they're probably my two favorite black series. I'm sure I'm doing other black series uh, injustice by saying that in there. <laughs> I'm just looking around. And retro, well, I was, I was at the beginning of retro. So like the retro, I was sort of at the, at the beginning of like, hey, we could bring back these retro figures and we could do new figures from from different entertainment or ones that the Kenner had missed, and uh, this is really cool. And it's they're, they're 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 charming, and you know they're they're simplified, but there is something there. Uh, so I guess the one I like the most, I, don't know, hmm. I like the fact that they scanned my figures. So like my ones here, I leave the can I leave for a minute? But my My collection here, they said, oh, how well, how are we going to do it? How are we going to sculpt them? I was like, well, just scan them, scan, 3D scan them. So they 3D scanned my Vader. This is probably the first iteration. This is before retro, really, but it's like the, the, that kind of prototype thing. So they scanned my figures to make that first two waves of Star Wars and Empire. So they, that those two waves will always have a special place in my heart because they're sort of like the children of my, of my <laughs> figures that I spent years collecting and going to numerous boot sales which you too will understand when i when i say that it's great to actually speak to someone who understands what it is um in terms of the best figure the best character select yeah i think i should probably reword that question actually because i think what what i mean especially as it pertains to retro collection is which which figure do you think just encapsulates that overall retro uh, feel the best because i've 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 gone down the wormhole of retro myself and I find every figure that I pick up from every wave, like I, with the Phantom Menace box set recently, 
the Queen Amidala is <laughs> such an incredible figure. And it's one of those figures where it's you could imagine it on shelves yeah. back then. Yeah. You know, I get I guess and, and I, there's so many figures. The, the the when I when I was pitching the idea of retro at first, I think the example I was using, I was using two examples, but I'll talk about one, uh, was like imagine Maul in an old retro fashion. And then, that, then people went, Oh, oh, I understand what you're talking about now. It's like it's not just just doing the old ones, it's doing new ones, but it's very nostalgic based. So I like I like the more one. And um my my favorite one, probably I can't tell you. You'll have to wait to see that one. And when it comes out, <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> that's as near as a oh, that's as near as a scoop you. you're gonna get. <laughs> That's awesome. No, we'll take it. We'll take even a even a subtle scoop. <laughs> Gotta love him. Yeah. Uh, to back to me. Yeah. Okay. So sticking <clears throat> with uh, Cobb Vanth actually again. So it's looking looking at the pictures. It looks, and it hasn't been confirmed in the press release or anything, but it mm. looks as though the armor is completely removable. It doesn't seem to be joined at the sides. There's no definitive picture of that. So can you just confirm, if possible, when you take the head off and you do the swap, can yeah. the armor lift off? And if that's the case, do the gauntlets remove as well on the knee pads? Like, how much of that armor is removable? So, uh, so this is interesting. This is where this is when you know, as we make each figures, we often think about future releases or future possibilities and try and be clever with our tooling, whether it's for that figure or an, a specifically another figure, or whether we can put things in different tools. And it's like a it's like a Sudoku puzzle when we're tooling because we you know we make a lot of figures every year and we have to use lots of tools. So yes, I can confirm that the 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 chest armor, if you pop Cobb's head off and take his bandana off, the armor will lift off like that. You know, it'll come it'll come off and it'll yeah. unplug on the back from the uh, the t tubing from his gauntlets. But his gauntlets do not remove. Looked at that, they would it would just be too thick and too big to do that. So for tooling efficiencies and to sort of allow us to have tooling for potentially future figures, and it, it, that was how we devised it. Um, the, so you can pipes, kind of. But the pipes pop out though, right? No, only oh, only right. from the back. They go into right, okay. the back of his um, uh, jetpack. The pipe, so you can, they can come off. Does it go into the jetpack or does it go into his armor? I can't remember. But you can you can get this whole armor piece off, but the gauntlets do not come off because they would minimum minimum wall thicknesses and things would make it too course, clunky yeah. and it, it didn't yeah. look didn't look great. So it's kind of it's sort of he's half undressable, but there is reasons yeah. behind that. But hopefully people have fun with it. I mean it's. I'll say like, I'm well happy that we got Cobb at last. You know, when I came in, I was like, tell me Cobb's coming. <laughs> it was like, yeah, here it is. Yeah. I was like, oh, he looks amazing. So, yeah, yeah so there, there's your happy. answer. It is removable. Thank you. No worries. That's cool. It's, uh, it's, it's cool how you talk about future proofing figures for, for future releases and, you know, looking at details on, on individual figures as you, as you're going through the process to, sort of realize oh this could come in handy down the line so just on that what sort of insight if any can you give to us like the just the people who buy these toys and stick them on a shelf what sort of the the process behind an action figure from sort of conceptualization to realization what's what's involved in that overall process it's I know it's probably not got a lot enough. of stuff. I mean, it's I mean, I've spoken about this. I've spoken about this before, so I'll kind of like do a little shorthand. So it's about twelve to eighteen months worth of development time from like, hey, let's do this figure to it being on your shelf, and that includes you know sculpting, getting approvals, doing deco, getting first shots in, getting production samples in, getting packaging in, and then going yes, manufacture it, get it manufactured, get it out the out of the factory onto a ship, sail around the world, get to delivery distribution centers out to everything so it's that's that takes between a, a year and 18 months depending on the product and complexity and how quickly you want to get it to market um the other bit and i mentioned it a little bit before was now that we're on this sort of fan slice where that's all we think about added into that process now is this planning stage like sometimes you know sometimes you, you arrive really quickly at a figure and go We've got to do Krennic. Let's go. And we'll make it. Do, 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 do. 
now we're kind of like, all right, what are our stories? What are our themes? What does Return to Tatooine mean? What does what 2026 do? What do we want to do then? What's the story? All right, which do we do? And we, we spend more time planning right, that figure with that one, that figure not with that one. Let's not do that one. Let's leave that one. Let's spread that out because that makes sense in a year. So we're planning like in three-year chunks, to be honest with you. And we now have the time as a fan group to the luxury of doing that. So that's a whole new process, which we wouldn't necessarily have had before or 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 the time or the 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 resource to do it so i'm hoping that that new aspect of the 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 development cycle will make things easier to understand will make collecting easier because that's what i want i want collecting to be easier and when i say easier i mean more kind of just focused like i love the old kind of posters where you could you get the the the, the Atta and the Hoth and you go, oh, I've got that one, that one. Like, I really want that back again. Yeah. Like, I'm working really hard to kind of get that sense back where I can collect a world or collect a story, Return to Tatooine being the first mm-hmm. one. So planning those out is really important over and knowing where we're going to, you know, building up to whether it be 27 or, or 28 or 29. So that's that's new to me. And it's, it's fun. It's actually, mm-hmm. it's actually the funnest part for me personally because, like, I know how things are made, but I'm not as an expert as, you know, the, the rest of the team or the engineers. They know how to physically make it, but I enjoy that planning part because it's the fun bit. And then, so it's, it sort of bridges the gap between marketing and design. So that's where we come together yeah. to create stories because Star Wars is a story. You know, it's it's like one of the great stories ever told. So story's key Amazing. for me. And, anyway. and it's a box ticking exercise because I, I love how you touched on that, um, that poster element because I'm, Obviously, I'm not of the era of uh, the vintage, the original Ken of stuff. Um, that's a, just Young a couple of years before my time. Just a <laughs> couple of years. Um, but I've even then, I've still got fond memories of getting the posters for figures from like Power of the Force, Revenge of the Sith, you know, and ticking those off. And I, that's that's one of the things I really yeah. love doing as well is having a a mission. Um, and that's one of the things I'm finding doing that I'm doing myself is going back and that's collecting good. these figures from lines that I missed out on. So yeah, I love that. Love it's important. That. I mean, that that to me is the, the epitome of what collecting is. Personally, it's one of the things that we do. And we have we have so many toy lines now that we can look at. We have so many choices. And we have so many figures. I mean, goodness me, we're under hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. When when Tim and I collected the old school, it was like 100. Was it 111? You can argue how many what numbers it is with it 96 111 116 whatever it is like that was it that was it like we've done that in retro now we're up to we're actually up to 96 now just in the new retro stuff and it's like tvc hundreds black series hundreds so it's like i'm trying to capture our ability to go back and get a sense of completing and collect collecting and completing because there is a there is a yeah there is a human need for that and i don't like it when i can't finish something like I like to be able to mm. do a little bit. So I like Returns to Tatooine. I want people to go, I got Returns to Tatooine. That was great. I love that experience. And I've yeah. kind of got it. What's the next one you're going to give us, Steve? So that, that sick, oh, go- goose bumpy, that kind of <laughs> feeling I've got to get back in this modern day. And it's yeah. different. It's got to be done differently. But that that's my promise is I, I, I'm going to try and bring back that sense of uh, yeah. specialness back to everyone. He says, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that that's actually music to my ears, really, because I one of one of my biggest frustrations is not being able to complete something like a a crew or a team specifically. You know, when mm. something is an actual specific team, yeah. that is the biggest frustration for me. Um, are you are you are you done, Steve? I can keep going. I am, yeah. Over to you, mate. Right. Oh, I see. Okay, I thought cool. you meant, are we done? No, we can keep <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I've got a few left yet. I was just yeah. uh, being polite to Mr. Sith Lord. Um, okay, so about uh, more recent releases, the Blurg and the Mandalorian set. This is going to be a mini um, negative complaint almost uh, because right. I've been asked to ask this. So um, the Mandalorian and the Blurg, fantastic. Amazing that we're getting the Blurg. Uh, love creatures in TVC, that whole world, world, world building aspect yeah, of the line. Cool. Um, amazing news that the original Mandalorian in his original armor, which is my my favorite look for him, um, has the new barbell hips. Obviously, he needs them because he needs to sit on the blurg. Yeah, yeah. However, the figure doesn't hap- happen to have that. rocker ankles. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> so it's so it's um, I, you know, the question is really. It, 
was that like an oversight that was just missed or was it like a budget thing you just thought we could can't get it done on this release and no one I know, noticed. It sounds, <laughs> I know it sounds really stupid but it's like we, we've got so many moving parts and so many things to consider and choices it's all always down to choice we try and choice and plan out what's the most important thing so like you know and the, the the hips and the hips and the ankles are always what portraits portraits hips and ankles are always kind of like the boom, boom, heads knees and toes uh that we're always kind of thinking about and it was just one of those choices it was like all right how do we do it what do we want to do Where, what other stuff do we want to do and it was certainly the, the the hips trumped the ankle so it wasn't necessarily an oversight it's just sometimes we have to make choices on what to do and how to get it out i know it seems really small and, and insignificant but lots and lots of small and insignificant things tally up to pile up yeah. you know might tally up to a whole nother figure eventually so yeah it was, it was it was a choice so i hope people will enjoy it even without the uh the the the, the rocker rocker ankles just make sure he never no, touches let's... the ground he's always on he's always either on it or in its mouth <laughs> <laughs> actually just a quick question about the mouth um just to confirm because i'm pretty sure looking at the shots the mouth is articulated yeah. right yeah 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 cool i say that yeah, it must be. Yes. Yeah. I don't have one here. I did have one in my office. I almost brought it with me, actually. But no. <laughs> I will say such yes. Tea, there's such no tea. way Emily would not would not make the mouth movable. And if, if no. she didn't, then she'll let me know. <laughs> and I'll look stupid, but that's fine. <laughs> no, thanks. Amazing. No, I'm really I am really excited for that blurg. I'm I'm don't tend to dabble in TVC much these days. I tend to dedicate the last little bit of space that I've got for for six inch stuff. But that blurg is definitely going to be so, a. Stephen, did you move from TVC up. to Black Series? Were you a TVC a beginning, and you kind of just I, sort of expanded your shelving, or what? what I don't like to say that I've moved because I still I still do pick up three and three quarter inches like every like every Star Wars collector. It's my bread and butter. It's what I've yeah. grown up on. It's what I've known for. The majority of my collecting life um for me um and I've, I've made this known on videos and live streams that i've done and stuff but for me personally i just find that black series just offers something different so i i'm, I'm you know I've, i'm firmly in the I, I don't like this whole scale divide you know um, there's, a, there's a, <laughs> a, a, a very a very vocal uh, proportion of people out there that are, no, the black series is this, black series is that, vintage collections this, vintage collections that. You're not one of them, Tim. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but for me, it's, I don't know. It's just it offers something that little bit different. I think they are different. One of the they biggest things for me is it's I I love detail. Like I love to see detail. Like if I pick up a figure, I mean, you spoke about it briefly when you touched on the the photo real side of it i love that i mean when it came to tvc it's it's done just as well as it is in black series but for me just having something a little bit bigger where i can really appreciate all that detail that's gone into a figure yeah. it's just i don't know there's just something about it and i think I, I think it's probably i've been collecting three and three quarter inch figures for so long but not long enough that i'm not completely adverse to it as a as a line if that makes any sense i'm not one of these people that's oh okay. everything's got to be three and three quarter inch I, I i love that i've i've over my over the years that i've collected i've sort of become a bit of an eclectic collector at one point i just collected action figures whereas now i just collect a little bit of everything if i like it yeah. i'll collect it and i love this i love an unorganized and messy collection if that's the right word but you know when there's just when when you've got a collection of just all different things and all like all different characters, yeah, all different visual sides, interest there's all different across it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's where fine. you can walk in and just and and, and Black yeah. Series lends itself to that. So yeah. like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I've moved um because I still do pick up there are figures that I'll pick up in vintage collection that I think have been done better in vintage collection than they have in Black Series and vice versa. So I wouldn't yeah. say I've moved, yeah. but I just appreciate them but I think welcome both fantastic. scales yeah i mean like <laughs> yeah you know, star wars is for everyone collecting is for everybody everyone can collect what they want as i say i never ask anyone to apologize for what they collect because it's a personal thing you know it's like it is a very internal thing for each and everybody i'm like you i kind of collect a little bit of everything i have i have a uh, um, an affection for three and three quarters because i grew up with it but there are some things in black series that i, I like having that scale and it's 
you know, mm. there's no denying three, uh, you know, uh, TVC is world building. You know, you could say Black Series is character building. Yeah. It, they're, 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 they're different and yet the same. And yeah, you have two camps. Yeah. That's okay. I don't, I don't mind that. That's fine to have two camps. Um, I like a little bit of sport as well. That's kind of fun. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was just interested because it's, you don't, off, you don't often <clears> meet <throat> people that do both and kind of mix and match. Mm. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, you buy, you buy a variety because when you stand and we all do it, we all stand and look at our collection and kind of like gaze on it when we've had a hard day at work or whatever, we come back and we gaze upon it and yeah. having different stuff just triggers your brain differently. It releases different endorphins mm -hmm. and kind of brings back memory. So everything is yeah. valid. If I'm honest. Yeah, that's my, I turned the tables on you there. I was asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the I think the scale divide it just comes down to figure envy at the end of the day. You know, if if one thing gets released in one scale, the other set of people are going to look at it going, oh, "I really wanted that," or you know, it's just the way it's just the way we work, really. So it's the thrill of the hunt. Yeah. It's the thrill of the hunt. There's a thrill mm. behind it. There is. There is a there is a almost a sadistic need to kind of like try and get stuff because <laughs> it's interesting. So as this is a conversation, I collect a lot of retro stuff, so I'll collect very distinct okay i'm gonna buy that and there's like 12 figures and i love hunting for it i love getting it and then not quite getting it and i have theories about how many times you can do that before it becomes not good but like <laughs> when i collect something that is like 12 figures and i get the 12th figure i'm like yes done it i've completed it like very very mm. very quickly deflate and go ah oh. what's next I got to find someone else now, and then yeah. I'll go and find something else. Like I'll okay, well, yeah. I got all those. I'm gonna go and click black hole now, <laughs> and I'll just go and find yeah. those. So there is, I believe there is a there is a human requirement for this hunt. It's like I think it's what drives yeah. us as well. So I'm not saying I'm gonna hold off figures that you'll never ever 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 get, and I'm sure a lot of your viewers will say, well, what about those and him and her and that? <laughs> but I'm gonna guess that a lot of us are in this for. a a long haul you know this is a lifelong love of toys this is why we, this is why i do it and i i am not unusual i'm pretty joe average and i'm sure tim steven it's why you do it it's sort of like i don't see you suddenly steven i don't know how old you are but hitting 40 and go yeah i'm done with that now no forget that yeah you know, me and tim we're going to be doing it well into our 80s if <laughs> I'm given that chance so I'm amazingly amazingly steve i'm not actually that far off believe it or not <laughs> really? well you, well you're jaggy so i can't really tell how, how old or young you are <laughs> but we're but we're well, in I'll you, I'll, 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 yeah 100 percent. i mean I'll, I'll give you a little clue the line that, that that i grew up with and that really got me into star wars was the power of the force 2 line yeah. um yeah. that's the line that i grew up with that's the line that i have nostalgia for and just going back God, to what you so mentioned you then probably, about that you're about 30, 36 then, are you? Hmm. Just a, little bit, a little bit lower. I know the, the grains oh. are adding wrinkles, but no, I'm 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 33. But oh, okay. um, yeah, um, that's the that's the line that's that's sort of my nostalgia. When I see a Power of the Force card, I think I get the same feeling that Tim gets from seeing a vintage card. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where I really get excited. But yeah, to, talking about that deflating feeling, that's actually one of my little side quests that I'm going through at the minute. I'm going back and I'm recollecting the figures that I had when I was a kid or never got and putting that together. So now I have a dedicated section in the collection for Power of the Force. <laughs> I'm dreading getting to the end of it though, because like you said, what's next? Like it's yeah. that deflation. Once you've done it, what what do you do next? Yeah, it's, it's a, I, would love, I would love to, I would love to, I'd love to, and I've chatting to some people who are like professors in colleges and things, the psychology behind collecting. I'd love to do that. Maybe when I retire, I'll do a whole white paper <laughs> or book on like the psychology of like, I, at the moment I call it the ABCs, you know, ABC is um, achievement, belonging and control. Like collecting allows us to finish things and achieve something. Belonging, obviously community yeah. and control in terms of I'll choose what I get. Steven, you want six inch and three and three quarter inch. Tim, you're three and three quarter inch. Me, I'm retro. It's totally fine. I'm in control. No one's going to tell me what to do. And that there's, there's, a, there's a human psychological need for that. And it releases certain feelings and endorphins and all this kind of stuff. So I'd love to sit down and write a, a white paper or book on that when I, when I have the time. Yeah. But uh, I'll do that when I'm retired. But there's something really interesting there. Um, well, yeah, I know, I, know, I know about the whole deflating thing. Because when I finished the 96 loose... I was like, well, what 
what next but that's that's why i love the vintage collection because for me it's a continuation of kenner i know they're not the retro style but you know getting commander cody on a vintage style card for example just yeah, yeah. brilliant stuff you know yeah it's cool um is it is it my turn steve sith lord i think so yeah i think I'm, yeah yeah um, to you, my friend. Okay, so on one of your Me famous Insta- one of your famous Instagram posts, Steve, uh, you you asked what people would like from what they saw from the D twenty three footage. Um, yes. Um, now I don't know where I'm official research. To... Not official research, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, what do you like? Just, what do you reckon? Just putting it out there, yeah. And obviously, there's probably some Inside. things that maybe I should. There's some maybe some of the things I shouldn't have seen. So maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. But the things that I would personally like <laughs> are the Imperial Hostile Trooper, which I've said before. Um, we we have an Atat, Legacy Atat, just waiting to be reissued. Uh, what else have I got? What uh, year was with that, an all new Tim? Tim, what was the what was the year on the last Atat we did? Was, was that, that 2009, one? 10? Was it? Was that oh, the not speed the last of bike one, out I mean, the back? Yeah, so you've got the legacy one, and then it got reissued in TVC in a in a TVC box, and then a Return of the Jedi version as well. But yeah, mm. to check out those tools, and I don't know, I don't know about that. But anyway, <laughs> they don't last for they don't last that long. Tools. You got the ten, Falcon out. You got the Falcon ten year, out. Ten years, same, fifteen same years. Year, yeah, so. yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, what else? Have you not got one, Steve, that you can clone like your re- like the retro collection figures? Can you like, pass I, I, it? I, I don't actually. I, I kind of. <laughs> I used to have all the ships and then it just got too big it. and I sort of like, I kind of restricted because I'm in control. I restricted what I could collect. Otherwise <laughs> I just spend ridiculous money. It's just crazy. But no, sorry, Tim, carry on, mate. You were at, at, re- uh, pilot, been... uh, resistance or is it resistance pilot Zeb? He looked pretty cool. Um, we there, saw yeah. him in, we saw him in uh, the Mandalorian anyway, didn't we? So yeah. Uh, saw Guerrera two tubes from rogue one there in Andor again. So, you know, two anyway, tubes, yeah, um so i'm just going to move on to my final question if you don't mind um uh because that's more of a statement um so with a finite budget how do you strike a balance uh between what collectors want i.e legacy characters you know uh prequel characters uh from the new media of because obviously you need to support the new media of course yeah, and um, of course. lucasfilm are obviously going to be wanting to do that have things on shelves and things like that so how does that balance get struck knowing that you do have two audiences effectively maybe in in one line yeah yeah uh the difficulty <laughs> it's the true answer <laughs> it's almost an impossible task i'll be honest with you tim like you know, whether you're looking at black series or at vintage, they're 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 different lines, they're different businesses, they're different groups of different sizes and different needs and wants and demographics, and you know, some are they're the same but very different. So you've got that dynamic going on. Then you've got the dynamic of obviously supporting our license or with their new their new staff and the things that they need to come out, which is absolutely fair and what what we should do. I think. The conversation between licensor and licensee is a lot more um, fluid at the moment, understanding those demographics and the, and the different groups. And, well, this group might want more here and this group might want more here. And there's splinters within those groups who want this and want prequels and want, you know, OT or no, they want Mandalorian. So it's really difficult. I'm not going to be honest <laughs> with you. It, I'm going to be honest with you, but uh, I think just balance is a good is a good word. And I've used it before. It's just trying to just just balance because what i often say is like these these hardcore fans particularly I mean, you know, hardcore fans or apex fans whatever you want to call yourselves i class you as those who have a lot of collections they're around forever so like we don't always have we can't always deliver everything all at once mm. for everybody it's just impossible just can't do it i'd be releasing 700 figures a, a year almost <laughs> he says exaggerating but probably not um <clears throat> so like we can we can pass it out and we i've learned that a lot from marvel legends as well you know when i worked on marvel is we call it like we'll chase it we'll we'll chase it so that's why i think we're trying to pull more stories annually in so that we can kind of make sense of what we're pulling in knowing that it, it'll be one year but then it won't end we have to still feed that story as the years go on but i'm hoping everyone's here for the long haul so uh 
so it, it is a balance but it, it's 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 not a science it's an art and it you know get things wrong we get things right but it's it's really hard because i cannot i cannot promise everyone everything they want when they want no, it it's just no. impossible but I, I do promise to do <clears throat> my best and kind of try to make sense of those and kind of so people can go i get it all right i understand that that's that's i can't get that now but like maybe later or something else so but I, I, did that answer your question not no it did it did, sure sure I, did. <clears throat> it's one of those things isn't it like when you try to please everybody sometimes i mean this doesn't happen you, but you end you up can. pleasing you know do you know what i mean it's, it is very difficult because there are <laughs> with the amount of stuff that's been new media that's been churned out it must be so difficult to keep up yeah whereas before you just had to sort of look back at something and go oh i want to do this because i want to do it you know yeah there's so many, so many things to pull from now it's just like yeah. gone are the days where it was like three movies and we just kind of pull from that it's just so much now which is great because it gives us yeah. it gives us content and fodder for years and years and years i, I don't want to always you know i don't want to be in a position where we're just always re going over the old ones again and again and again and i know some people think we might but I'm trying to find time to make sense of that predicament more and and yeah. try and plan more and make these little story beats make more sense so people can at least rally around things. Like, you know, I keep going on about Return to Tatooine. Will everybody want to go Return to Tatooine? Not everyone, but I, I think a lot of people will. And I think, I think there, there's enough meaning behind it. And then knowing that in 26, we'll take you somewhere else. You know, and I'm also very conscious of about how much money people spend, a share of wallet. It's like it's a lot of stuff. So yeah, completists, I, mean, I can't that, help you. I like well, <laughs> just people that complete it, but... like, people that collect both scales just to me that's just like, oh my god, <laughs> like the amount of money. Um <laughs> but um but no, we're here we're here for the ride, Steve. And we really can't afford we, good webcams, that's why. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're here for the ride, Steve, and we really appreciate you know, I mean, I'm just, I've got this figure here. I mean, yeah. you know, to get to get the, yeah. the stand that the quality of that make them all as good as that, and you you won't go wrong, basically. Yeah, and that that's what we, you know, that's our aim. Our aim is to deliver great articulation, great lightness, the right characters, everything right. And you know, we 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 do our best and plan it out as with with the resources that we've got. Sometimes that always works. Sometimes it we miss. Sometimes it's not what people expect. Some people may like it. Some people may not. So it's uh, it's just a question of listening and understanding and planning and working out what the best choices are. And that's 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 not just a toy line. That's life. <laughs> it just make the good make the good choices so having that fan team now really focused on that i think allows us more time to make sure that we make you know do our best to make the right choices at the right time so i'm, I'm grateful for that awesome awesome well i appreciate your time anyway um for me um every time yeah, well, it's brandon to... everybody Look, brandon's, brandon's back, back. <laughs> sith lord have you got another question no, I think uh, we ended done? that on quite a, a nice philosophical little note, didn't we? So I think yeah. that's that. You could, I don't think the answer to my next question could have ended that any better. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm happy. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate your time. Hey, no problem at yeah, all. Appreciate it. Anytime, anytime, literally, anytime. I uh, just from my side, I wanted to to thank all of you for making the time um, and uh, to to making uh, Star Action Figures event that bit more special by sharing this conversation with us um you know sure as an as an employee and as a brand manager working on this it's it's great to sit and listen but even just as a fan of the lines that we make and, and of the brands that, that we're representing here it it's um it's brilliant to get to just hear your each of your passion and and love for for, for um the stuff that we all love yeah. um, all of us sitting here listening that's into cool. your conversation. And, and everyone that's listened to this continue this conversation with your friends yeah at the at the star action event continue having it with friends of people you know and then turn around go to the other side of the store or the shop i can say shop now and and have a chat with someone else you don't know because that's what spreads mm -hmm. it spreads the word spreads the love and spreads the, the passion and the community so uh i appreciate uh, everyone at star action 
pulling an event together like this and Brandon with your help as well and everyone Stephen and Tim this is great I love this kind of like I call them store cons I don't know whether that's a, an official name but like mm. I think it's really really cool that everyone's doing this so more power to all of you yeah. so thank you and and to Stephen and Tim I, I know I tease with you know uh the, the longest running youtube uh youtuber for star wars and the king of tvc i know i do joke <laughs> but you're, you're both leading voices within the, the 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 star wars toy community especially the uk toy community um and we uh we value everything that you do with that voice so keep up the good work yes and and representing the uk it's great to have a good old kim wag isn't it isn't it gents you know yeah well, i appreciate old, the invite thank you really old, yeah me too me too thank you very much Measure. Okay. Well, guys, may the force be with you, and uh, I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Cheers. And you.